the Javelin anti-tank missile is revealed. It is highly lethal against tanks with conventional and reactive armor. In this video, we'll talk about the mechanism, development and combat use of the Javelin. The Javelin has secondary capabilities and can be used against helicopters and the army by land. Its direct attack capability encounters the target with an overhead cover or in bunkers and soft launch allows employment from within buildings and enclosed fighting positions. You're going to want to stay to the end of the video because we're telling you about how Javelin proved itself in recent Iran and Afghanistan conflicts. Javelin was developed and built by a partnership with Raytheon and well-known Lockheed Martin. The Javelin missile's tandem warhead is a high explosive round. A charge is used by this round to make a jet of super plasticity to form metal, formed from trumpet-shaped metallic liners. The result of this process is a high-velocity jet that can blast through the armor. The missile consists of a very small thermal imaging camera in the nose and a computer that is capable of locking onto a tank. Even if the tank is moving, the missile will follow the target. The missile is designed to attack the top side of a tank, where the armor is thinner. The missile flies to 330 to 660 feet altitude and dives at a 45 degree angle. The very first charge detonates the armor of the vehicle and the second charge penetrates it. Javelin's long wave IR seeker enables it to engage in obscurance and reduce visibility and resist countermeasures. It is different and the versatility helps in the destruction of tanks, bunkers, small boats, buildings, and slow moving helicopters. Do you ever wonder how these anti-tank weapons are fired and why they are powerful? Firing unit. The Javelin system has a command launch unit, CLU, and a missile. The CLU includes a passive target acquisition system along with a fire control unit. It also has thermal imaging site and thermal viewers on the Javelin needed to be cooled off to function well, which takes almost 30 seconds. The time can increase depending on the weather conditions and can increase if the weather is too breezy. The system also includes multiple safeguards to avert or abort the accidental launch. The controls for the gunner using the missile are also on the CLU. The day sight equipped on the missile can be magnified four times, and the night sight can be magnified four times or nine times optics. The Javelin command launch unit sends a signal to the missile, which tells it to lock onto the target before launch. The weight of the CLU is around 50 pounds when it is loaded with the missile, and it can be fired by crouching. It is lighter in weight as compared to a TOW or other long-range missiles that typically require a heavy tripod. Did you know the Javelin could be fired in multiple ways? Once the gunner locks the infrared seeker on a target and pulls the trigger, the Javelin missile is fired out of the CLU and does not use its rocket motor, which is also known as a soft launch that only gives a little backblast. Missile launch backblast not only makes it easy for opposing forces to spot the launcher after firing, but it can make launching while inside a confined space a risk. So basically the soft launch of the Javelin secures the chances of the gunner to stay alive. Also, the Javelin does release gas, so you don't want to stand behind it. Unlike a lot of long-range anti-tank missiles, it is a fire-and-forget system, so no further input is required after the first launch. The Javelin crew does not have to guide the missile towards the target, as in the wire-guided TOW or laser-guided AT-14 Cornet. The Javelin can also be fired in direct attack mode, which is useful for firing at targets that are too close for the top attack, or they are confined in a bunker or cave entrance, which is mostly covered from the top. The direct fire mode could also be effective against low-flying helicopters, but to every pro, there's a con. In Javelin's case, one of the few limitations is its range, which is approximately 2.5 kilometers. The battle combat situations require a range of approximately 5 kilometers or more. If you've reached this far in the video, we would like to thank you. You can extend your support by subscribing to the channel, giving this video a thumbs up, and clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of the content we upload. Now, back to the video. In 1996, the Javelin started its service with the U.S. military and was initially spotted during the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. The United States was unable to deploy their army by land in northern Iraq. They airdropped special forces that could fight alongside Kurdish Peshmerga fighters. In the Battle of Debeka Pass, a force consisting of very few soldiers of the special forces operations and a larger Peshmerga contingent engaged and destroyed an Iraqi mechanized company, consisting of around 100 soldiers. The U.S. forces had just four Javelin launch units and 19 missiles were fired, out of which 17 missiles were hit and destroyed two T-55 tanks, eight MTLB armored personnel carriers, and a lot of local army trucks. Javelins were used to destroy several other tanks during the war in Iraq. These casualties included the Type 69 tanks and the Lion of Babylon T-72s. When the war in Iraq ended, the Javelin's main duty soon came to sniping smaller and softer targets. The bitter truth of utilizing Javelins is that it costs around $80,000.
Javelin missiles cost a lot more than the weapon systems they are destroying. This concern worried the US forces and they held back on using the weapon in Afghanistan. The United States spends dollars to operate jet fighters that drop expensive smart missiles or deploy ground troops to take out a few rebels. The relative cost of utilizing javelins as a sort of heavy sniping weapon may not be that absurd. Javelin causes less collateral damage than calling in an airstrike or dropping a laser guided bomb. It could also save a lot of lives if that strike eliminates an active threat timely. Javelin is a top tier anti-tank weapon. Do you think it will be victorious in combat against a modern tank? Leave your response in the comment section or enjoy our other video, XB-70 Valkyrie.